Robert, where do you see the impact specifically within states and local governments if there isn't a stimulus deal? How make or break is this for your credit analysis? So it's an important element within our, our analysis, no doubt. The policy question certainly is very interesting. And looking to federal policy, whether it be monetary or fiscal, I mean, the actions are really an undervalued pillar in the marketplace. And, of course, there's, there's room for debate about whether any future fiscal relief package uh, will be adequate for certain states and regions. So you have to include that element in your analysis. But looking ahead, even a small amount of federal aid should be viewed as a positive for the municipal bond market. I mean, just to say it simply, the more funding states receive from Congress, the lower the expenditure cuts and the negative impact on the downstream entities, such as local governments, health care, or higher education. So just relieve some of the pressure in, in that in your analysis. And take me downstream a little bit. I like that you mentioned higher education, the healthcare sector. I'm also thinking airports. I'm in New York City. I'm thinking about the MTA, for example. How bifurcated are those markets becoming, or are they all trading perhaps at higher spreads? Because as you said, if you cut funding, everything trickles down to the downstream entities. Yeah, the complexity you just described is, is very much part of our analysis today. You know, the economy remains unplugged today, and that makes for a wide range of possible scenarios going forward. But I think you can, you can summarize it by saying the fundamentals in the municipal bond market have changed, given the, the COVID-induced economic downturn. It's driving revenues lower, uh, airports, uh, mass transit systems. However, not all transportation-related uh, credits are, are doing poorly. You know, more people are driving today, and so they're paying more in tolls and so forth. Uh, you know, the market's pricing this, and it's evidenced by the wider credit spreads that you're talking about in some sectors of the municipal bond market. But let's be mindful that things can turn for the better. It's not just for the worse. Uh, and so if you focus on those issuers, even in the beaten down sectors like transportation and, you know, more specifically airports, you can find good value. Uh, they, they, these prices look cheap. They have strong balance sheets. And the fact that they can snap back quickly when the worst of the pandemic passes should look attractive to some, some investors. So let's talk about the pandemic and also coming off the debates last night, there is a focus, of course, on ACA, the individual mandate, the pressure, of course, that some of this is put on the hospitals when you take a look at spreads and some hospital underperformance year to date relative to the general market. How are you viewing hospital credits at this moment? Yeah, it's a very interesting sector. Uh, it's one that yeah, I think many investors were concerned about. Uh, the beginning of this year especially, but we think the sector is offering really good value here. The wide credit spreads are attractive from our perspective for the underlying risk in that sector, especially when you consider the essential nature of that service. I think we all look at health care differently today and, and, uh, than we did just a few months ago. But obviously we did see the challenges in that sector due to COVID, but the industry has shown us that it was, even though confronting a significant challenge, that they were in a relatively good position to absorb that industry-wide shock due to COVID. Mm -hmm. So credit spreads widened earlier this year to levels that we think are compensating investors for risk in that sector. But more importantly, and these are the key points that we're looking at across a wide uh, a variety of uh, sectors within public finance, the demand for services in healthcare are rebounding. Now, we all know that the patient procedures that were non-essential, non-emergency related, they were postponed. But that's it. They were postponed. They're not permanent demand destruction. And they're coming back. So the backlog of these delayed procedures is really expected to boost the operating performance in the back end of this year into mm -hmm. next year. So we're seeing good value in health care. Robert, 30 seconds left here. 20 straight weeks of inflows. Do you expect to see further interest inflows or how much outflows do you expect? Uh, we're generally, in, you know, 30 seconds left, we're, we're generally uh, in, a, in a, a part of the calendar where municipal supply picks up, the demand is, as indicated by cash flows and token and mutual funds begins to wane as the end of the year, people kind of set in their asset allocation and then it should pick up by the end of next year. So there's probably good value to buy into some of the weakness and the what we expect to be elevated volatility in the marketplace.